whereas our national security is dependent upon our ability to assure continuity of government at every level in any national emergency type situation that might conceivably confront the nation. Nixon has deleted any reference to war, imminent attack, and general war from the order and replaced them with the phrase during any emergency that might conceivably occur. Nixon's order, which is the one in effect today, allows the government in the form of FEMA to suspend the Constitution for literally any reason they decide to call a national emergency. I cannot find a plan or executive order anywhere which outlines any procedure or allowance for the restoration of the Constitution after a national emergency has ended. This leads to the obvious conclusion that no restoration of the Constitution is contemplated or desired by those in power. In 1975, Senator Tunney expressed concern when he said, We know from what we've heard in the press that 15,000 names were being maintained by the Federal Bureau of Investigation for detention in an emergency. We also know that the Internal Revenue Service had its files on individual taxpayers. We know that the CIA had their Operation Chaos, and that the National Security Agency has the records of conversations that have been intercepted electronically. My question is this. Is there anyone, like yourself, General Bray, that is in control of the overall access to this data if it is maintained in a relocation site? And your answer, as I understood it, is no. Then he continued. General Bray, I must say that I still don't know who's in control of these relocation centers. You say you don't have that knowledge, and still we don't know from the three witnesses that we had here today that they had information as to who has control of those centers. I am not at liberty, Bray answered, to describe precisely what is the role and the mission and the capability that we have at Mount Weather or at any other precise location. I firmly believe that our continuity of government program has not provided continuity at all, but has been the instrument for discontinuing open and democratic government, and that the very program designed to protect Americans has actually been turned against us. There's a guy by the name of Buster Horton. He's a member of FEMA, and he's a member of the Interdepartmental Unit, which is empowered in the event of a national security emergency to become the unelected national government, a sort of FEMA secret government, so to speak. A pretext for invoking those emergency measures can be found almost daily in the newspapers. It can be anything, from the suspension of debt payments by the high bureaus of American countries to mass runs on United States commercial banks. And that's an issue, by the way, that was being handled personally by the National Security Council and Brent Scowcroft, to food shortages, to the drug war. The whole bit, anything, any disaster emergency declared at all, even including the oil spill from the Exxon tanker in Alaska, If the president had declared a national emergency, that could have triggered it. Any instability in the Middle East. Anything, in fact. And they've already tested their capabilities in April 1984 with Rex 84A. And that was designed to test the readiness of the United States civilian and military agencies to respond to serious national security crises. Now, the executive order that will implement this, the executive order 11051, details responsibilities to the Office of Emergency Planning, or FEMA. It gives authorization to put all executive orders into effect in times of national emergency declared by the president, increased international tension, or economical or financial crises. 
Note that it covers domestic crises, but does not even mention war or nuclear attack. Now, the only thing that has to happen for FEMA to be able to implement all the executive orders, emergency executive orders, is for the president to declare a national emergency of any type, as long as it's a national emergency. Executive Order 10995 provides for the takeover of the communications media. Executive Order 10997 provides for the takeover of all electric, power, petroleum, gas, fuels, and minerals. Executive Order 10988 provides for the takeover of food resources and farms. Executive Order 10999 provides for the takeover of all modes of transportation, control of highways, seaports, and etc. Executive Order 11,000 provides for mobilization of all civilians into work brigades under the government supervision. Executive Order 11001 provides for governmental takeover of all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive Order 11002 designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. Executive Order 11003 provides for the government to take over airports and aircraft. Executive Order 11004 provides for the Housing and Finance Authority to relocate communities, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. Executive Order 11005 provides for the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, and public storage facilities. Now, all of these were combined under Nixon into one huge executive order which allows all of this to take place if the president declares a national emergency and it can be implemented by the head of FEMA not by the president. The president has already given him that power under these executive orders. All of these were combined into Executive Order 11490, and that was signed by President Carter on July 20, 1979, and is, in fact, law. Now, remember what North said during the Iran-Contra hearing. He said that they were prepared to suspend the Constitution of the United States, and he said if it hadn't been for their getting caught that this would have happened. And all that did was delay it. This is what is still going to happen. President Bush issued a new executive order delegating to the director of FEMA powers which were vested in the president by the Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act of 1988. And although the order was described by the White House as simply a technical matter, in reality the revision delegated to the FEMA director direct responsibility for a large number of items which were earlier only the president's prerogative. And that includes responsibility for general federal assistance, federal emergency assistance, hazard mitigation, individual and family grant programs, and the power to direct other federal agencies to assist in an emergency. And that's the key. All other federal agencies will come under FEMA. Of course, the president retains the power to actually declare an emergency. But as soon as he does that, the implementation of the measures utilized will be transferred directly to the director of FEMA. Professor Samuel P. Huntington drafted for Jimmy Carter Presidential Memorandum 32, which led to the creation of FEMA in 1979. He wrote the seminal piece for the Trilateral Commission in the mid-1970s, recommending that democracy and economic development be discarded as outdated ideas. He wrote as co-author of the book Crises in Democracy, we have come to recognize that there are potential desirable limits to economic growth. 